Hey guys, in this video, I'll be talking about the iconic HK416 A5. Did VFC do it right? Let's find out. Coming in at 5 pounds and 9 ounces, the upper and lower are made out of metal. The CNC metal handguard has Picatinny rail sections on the 3, 6, 9, and 12 o'clock positions. The HK slimline stock has 5 positions. The included iron sights are nice, with the rear sight having quick detach, and the front sight can fold down into the handguard. The A5 controls are replicated well, although the left side mag and bolt release does wobble. The paint finish looks beautiful, but it is not durable. Mounting and removing accessories will scratch it. The trademarks are accurate and done well. However, there is an airsoft marking on the dust cover, which is not visible when the replica is in use. Originally, this comes with a standard M4 flash hider. There are 14mm negative threadings for any muzzle devices. BFC does make two variants of the HK416, the A5 and Delta, which differs in certain aspects. The A5 has an adjustable gas block, ambidextrous controls, different handguard, iron sights, and stock, while the Delta includes an optional longer barrel. To disassemble for repairs and maintenance, simply punch out these two receiver pins, then the receivers can separate. Internally, this is the VFC V3 AR system, with everything in the fire control group being steel, there is no end pass for the Asia models, but for the EU folks, there is. The hop up can be adjusted here at the gas block. There aren't any common issues with this platform, just the occasional inconsistent hop and the use of a lot of a Loctite. So if you were to disassemble anything, make sure to use a lot of heat. Superloop PTFE can be used for smoother operation. These come with the HK magazines, which weigh 392 grams and hold 30 rounds. This would take any VFC AR magazine, which can all be loaded at the top with any speed loader. The magazine release works as it should. The charging handle is not ambi. Bolt travel is smooth. The MB bolt release is very reliable. The selector is nice and clicky. The trigger is very nice. There's no travel up to the wall that has a break of 4.6 pounds. Out of the box, the dust cover does not close well. The four exists is mock. The gas efficiency is pretty good. A full gas fill fired off 168 shots with a power drop of 20 FPS after every 30 rounds. Here are some mag dumps at different temperatures.
The Serpico does have an extendable hammer, which can be adjusted to improve the cold weather performance. I would typically back it out for any temperature under 50 Fahrenheit. The recoil is pretty good, although the HK416 does have a zinc bolt rather than a steel one like the more expensive options, the replica clicks very nicely with a snappy impulse. Here are some comparisons for reference. At 100 feet out, with 0.32s, the groupings are pretty good. There are a lot more hop adjustments for even heavier BBs. With 0.2s, the replica is averaging at 345 FPS, or 1.1 joules. Like any other gas blowback, I recommend wearing some type of earplug, since they are very loud. Let's start with the pros. It's a HK416. The externals are very nice. The internals are all steel. There is a end pass for EU folks. Has really good gas efficiency. Toolless and very easy to adjust hop up. Good accuracy out of the box. And it's based on the VFC AR system. So parts and upgrades are plentiful. Now the cons. Although the paint finish is very nice, it is not durable. There is no end pass for Asia models. For some, accuracy could be hit or miss. And lastly, it's not so in the US. In conclusion, the VFC HK416 A5 is a very nice replica. Although the paint finish isn't all durable, it is done very well so the replica is very pleasant to look at. The internals are durable and the performance is awesome. Combined with the super easy to adjust hop up, the stands is my favorite and main rifle. As always, leave a comment and like the video to support my channel. Thanks for watching.